The Hoka Speed Goat 5. It's a pretty darn amazing shoe, probably going to be the most popular shoe of 2022. Let's get into the full details of the full review. But first, I do need to let you know that Hoka did send these to me to review. I didn't pay for them. Uh, they're not going to see this video ahead of time, proof it, tell me what to say, have any input whatsoever. I'm going to share the complete honest truth like I always do. So without further ado, let's get to it. Right off the bat, you can see they are filthy. I mean, uh, yeah, they're coated in mud. I mean, look at the uh, look at the outsole there. But you can see that, yeah, these are muddy because I use the shoes. I just got back uh, Saturday from a long run in the Great Smoky Mountains, went and hit Mount LeConte. Uh, take a look at that top right corner up here. Great, beautiful trails, just like amazing. Hey, real quick though, if you wouldn't mind giving the video a thumbs up down below, click that little like button. It helps out a lot and I would really appreciate it. Maybe if you're new too, click that subscribe button, you'll see more content like this. But whenever I do a full shoe review, I first talk about stats. No different with the Speedgoat 5s. Let's get straight to it. It is a neutral trail running shoe. This is a maximally cushioned shoe from Hoka designed for those long distance events. So whether you're out running a 50K, 50 mile, 100 mile race, 150 miles, whatever, this shoe is gonna be fantastic for that. So with all that cushioning comes the stack height, and this is a maximally cushioned shoe. So we've got 33 millimeters in the rear, 29 in the front for a four millimeter drop. And as far as weight goes, it's uh, you know it's not bad. It actually lost weight from the Speed Goat 4, which is really cool. Well, the big part of that is from the upper uh, and also the midsole compound. Uh, but yeah, so men's size 11 weighed in at 318 grams or 11.2 ounces. Men's size 11 is my size uh, and it does fit true to size just like all the other Hoka's with a size 11. This fits the same. But I should also mention that the Speedgo 5 is going to be available in a wide size as well. So if you need that, you're in luck. Talking about looks now, the Hoka Speedgo 5, I think this colorway is pretty cool. I know there's some people out there that don't really like this color. Uh, I, I can tell you though from experience it's not a yellow like puke color it's more of a greenish yellow uh, i think it's really cool but the uh, i gotta tell you though i've seen some pictures posted online of the red colorway and also the women's colorway looks amazing like i would want that shoe so i think it's a pretty good looking shoe but another thing to mention about the looks so this is a big shoe like i mentioned it is a maximally cushioned shoe but it has a wide footprint i mean i showed you the tread the outsole you can see how wide this is but what's interesting so this is a men's size 11. Hoka Torrent 2, also a men's size 11. If we put them up, you know, heel, heel to heel, let's see if this will focus. You can see heel to heel, the Spigo 5 is at least a half an inch, if not more, taller. Uh, so it is a big shoe. One thing to note, if you ever need yak tracks, Think about that, or micro spikes. You're gonna to have to order probably a little bigger size. All right, let's move on and talk about the upper. So the upper of the Speedgoat 5 is completely redone from the Speedgoat 4, uh, or these three, two, or any other, any other Speedgoats basically. But it is a dual layer jacquard mesh upper with uh, minimal overlays. Honestly, there really aren't any overlays except for this Hoka right here, uh, and a little bit here around the eyelets for the lacing system. Uh, so it's a very lighter weight upper, uh, incredibly comfortable, and it also has a good bit of like stretchiness to it. So on the upper, we have the uh, this portion right here, which is called the vamp of the shoe, uh, and that's actually borrowed from the Speedgo EVO, which is a fairly uh, it's, a more, it's a more stretchy portion of the shoe right here. So that actually allows the toe box to uh, be a little more accommodating. But I will say, when I first put on the Speedgo Fives, the toe box uh, it felt a little tight, like my pinky toe was rubbing the outer side right away, just trying it on walking around. However, when I got on the trail, I didn't feel it at all. It just, it was a non-issue and it felt great. Uh, even when wearing like this past weekend at Mount LeConte with that video I referenced, you know, I, I had two pairs of socks on. I was wearing my Exoskin Exotoe socks uh, to help prevent blisters. And then over top of that, I had these Smart Wool socks on because it was cold that day, like incredibly cold. So I put those on. So with two pairs of socks, the upper still felt great. The toe box was uh, fine. There was no constrictive issues with my toes. So yeah, if you have a, uh, need for a little bit of a wider toe box. I think the Speedgoat 5 is going to do that for you. Also new in the shoe, which a lot of other Hokas are doing that now, is the heel flare right here in the back, the elf ear, whatever you want to call it. I kind of like it. Like I said before on the review I did of the Carbon X3s, top right corner, uh, I think it kind of acts like a shoehorn. You put your heel in there and it just slides right in. It's nice. You can grab it pretty easily. Uh, and as far as the heel cup itself, I mean, it's, you know, it's fairly stout. There's a little give to it there. 
uh, which is pretty good. So the tongue of the shoe is also redesigned. It's a very thin tongue. There's really not much padding uh, at all on the tongue. Uh, and the top portion of it is more of like a, like a butterfly. It kind of sp spreads out a little bit. Uh, and it's been pretty good. It's not been that much of an issue. Uh, I did have one issue with it uh, that I noticed on long descents, which I'll go over here in just a minute when how it relates to the lockdown of the shoe. You know what, let's go ahead and talk about it. Let's talk about the lockdown. So the lockdown of the Speedgoat 5 is uh, okay. It's not, not bad, not great. Uh, in order to get a good lockdown with the shoe, I did have to do the lace lock. It does have the little extra eyelet up top, so you can do that. But without the lace lock, I did not feel secure, but with that, it feels pretty secure. With the lace lock though, that brings the laces up just a little bit as you tie them. And with this tongue, it's a pretty short tongue, you can see barely sticking out of the shoe right there, uh, you know, on those long descents this past weekend, coming back down from Mount Lacan, uh, the long descents, uh, it felt, I could feel it. I could feel the laces digging into the top of my foot a little bit. The tongue didn't really slide down at all. I could still see the tongue sticking out, but it's just, like I said, there's no padding to it. There's nothing there to really protect your foot at the very top. So with the lace lock, there is a little bit of an issue with the uh, with the comfort. I would like to see Hoka take the tongue, maybe make it just honestly like probably a quarter of an inch to a half an inch at most, probably a quarter of an inch taller, but just put a little bit of padding in there it would be really nice. So the upper, like I mentioned, is that dual layer jacquard mesh upper, uh, which is pretty good. It does keep out some debris from getting in the shoe, but when it comes to breathability, uh, there might be a little concern there. So it's winter time, it's been colder, I've been out running quite a bit with the shoe, uh, and my feet have never once felt really cold, even this past weekend when it was like seven degrees with the wind chill. I mean, I did have two layers of socks on, like I said, but it's never really been that big of an issue. They've not felt cold. So if we take a look at the tissue test that I did with the shoe, you can see when you switch the hairdryer on low, it, the tissue came up just a little bit. Uh, when I switch it on the high, it goes up a little bit more, but it really, Honestly, it's uh, the other shoes I've tested have been much more breathable than the Speedgoat 5. So that's my concern with the upper. I'm really curious to see how the breathability will do in the summertime when it's 85, 90 degrees, high humidity. Uh, I could see this causing some sweat issues with people's feet. If you're like me, I sweat a lot, even my feet sweat. There's runs here where I do uh, by seven, eight miles in the summertime and my feet are already squishy. So yeah, I'm a little concerned about the breathability in the summertime, but we'll see, time will tell. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the midsole of the Hoka Speedgoat 5. So cushioning, protection. I mean, whenever you think of a shoe that you want maximally cushioned, you want protection from rocks, chances are you're probably thinking about the Speedgoat. That's what it's known for. And it's no different with the Speedgoat 5. In fact, I'd say it's a little bit improved. The midsole compound is a compression molded EVA However, it's borrowed from the Speedgo EVO now, so it's a little more responsive. It has a little more pop to it than previous versions. Uh, the last version that I ran in was the, the uh, Speedgo 3. I ran in the 2 and the 3. I still have several pairs of them upstairs, but uh, I didn't try the Speedgo 4. However, I do know other people that have, and they've said that the 5 is definitely more responsive, feels better than the 4 and it's definitely better than the three. When running on rocky terrain like this past weekend, I was out with my buddy Lee. He was wearing the Hoka Torrent 2s actually, uh, and then I was wearing the Speedgoat 5s. And he kept commenting that like, oh, these rocks, man, I am keep feeling all these rocks. And I was like, what are you talking about? I, mean, <laughs> I didn't feel anything. Uh, this thing definitely had plenty of protection. There's not even, there's no rock plate in this shoe, uh, but honestly, with the cushioning that is in this shoe, you don't really need one. It just protects your feet really well. So the Speedgoat 5 does have a late stage meta rocker. It's actually kind of up here in the front of the shoe, uh, which kind of helps as your foot goes through that gate cycle, helps it roll off. Uh, and Hoka says it's supposed to create a more stable shoe. However, it is a maximally cushioned shoe with a higher stack height. And to me personally, it did feel a little unstable at times. But as far as durability goes of the midsole for the Speedgoat 5, I think this is gonna last easily in that 450 to 500 miles, probably a little more. Uh, it's just, it's a really good, comfortable midsole for sure. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the outsole of the Speedgoat 5. That's another thing that the Speedgoat 5 is known for, grip. It's known to be an amazingly good shoe in kind of nasty conditions. It just does a good job. And it's even better with the Speedgoat 5. It still has the Vibram Mega Grip outsole. As you can see, this one is filthy, uh, but it still has that Vibram Mega Grip outsole. However, now they are called traction lugs and they're redesigned. So it has kind of a layered uh, effect and it allows for more surface area uh, as those lugs go into the dirt and they also have these little like uh, knob things on little spiky knobs and yeah uh, Coca says it's supposed to give you 20% more grip 
Uh, like I said before, I don't really know how you quantify that, but I can certainly say that the grip is amazing with the Speedgoat 5. This past weekend, I was on hard packed snow, ice, and mud uh, running Mount Leconte and the Speedgoat 5s were amazing. For durability of the outsole, I see this lasting again in that 500 to 600 mile range. Uh, the, the rubber from the Vibro Mega Grip outsole has always been very durable. Obviously, if you're gonna hit the road for a lot of miles in the shoe, that's gonna decrease, but this outsole should last quite a long time. Speaking of road miles, the Speedgoat 5 is very comfortable. I did test it for maybe a mile or two on the road uh, just to get a feel for it, and it felt great. So if you have uh, maybe let's say a two to three mile section, you're gonna have to hit the road or a paved greenway to get to your local trail. These are gonna be a great option. Or maybe let's say you're running a 50K or hundred mile race where there's a little two to three mile road jaunt to get to the next uh, trail turn or whatever. This will be a good option for that and gonna be totally fine on the road. It will not cause you issues. With that said though, I'm not gonna pick the shoe to go run a road race. So when it comes to the price of the Hoka Speedgoat 5, uh, it did go up just a little bit. It's gonna sell for $155, so that's about 10 bucks more than the Speedgoat 4, but it is a little less than the Speedgoat EVO, and this is kind of a mixture of both of those shoes. So really a pretty good price. Uh, I think it's definitely worth it. Uh, the shoe is going to release on March 15th, uh, that's what Hoka says, so if you're somebody that wants to get the Speedgoat 5, you better get those orders in as quick as you can. So the bottom line of the Hoka Speedgoat 5, I think this is going to be the number one selling trail shoe of 2022. It checks all the boxes that a lot of people want, you know, Mac, a good cushion shoe on the trail, protection from the rocks, comfort in the upper, a responsive midsole that you can still use in a 100 mile race and, you know, not beat your feet up. Check, 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 this is it. I see myself using the Speedgoat 5 in my fall race. It's gonna be a 48 hour race uh, because it's mostly uh, like gravel or dirt packed trail. So yeah, I definitely will, this is a very high contender for me to use for that, that race because I'm gonna need something I can wear for a long time and keep my feet protected and this will definitely do the trick. However, I don't see myself using the Speedgoat 5 on my regular training runs, like, you know, my, you know, 20, 25 mile runs or 50Ks or even a 50 mile race. I've got other shoes that I would rather wear because for me, the Speedgoat line as a whole is um, honestly, it's a little bit too cushioned for my preference. It has a little too high stack height. I kind of prefer a little more ground feel and I have felt a little unstable in the Speedgoat line. I've actually rolled my ankles uh, in the other Speedgoats. I actually tweaked my ankle in the Speedgoat 5s when I was out testing them on my own backyard trail, which I know really well. So yeah, uh, in my opinion, it's still a little unstable for something where my feet and my legs are gonna be really fatigued. But with that said, I still think this is gonna sell out. I still think it's gonna be the most popular trail shoe of 2022. So if you are looking for the Speedgoat 5, whenever they start taking orders, get yours in there because they're gonna sell out and then you're gonna be waiting. All right, well, that's gonna do it for the review of the Hoka Speedgoat 5. Hope you enjoy. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. If you did, I would really appreciate it. Uh, it just helps the channel a lot, helps the video. And since we talked about the Hoka Torrent 2, if you wanna take a look at the full review of that shoe, it's gonna be right over here. You can go ahead and take a look at that. Great shoe for those, you know, 50K, 50 mile races. And then over here, we'll put a playlist up of some other shoe reviews where there's lots of Hoka shoes in there and other shoes as well. So thank you for watching. I do appreciate you all. I'll see you on the next one.